All right, so we are headed to a new gym. Actually, not a new gym, an old gym. And, uh, so I'm at school, you know, so I've got three gyms at my disposal. Technically four, but I haven't really gone to that other one. I don't know, I think I should actually look into it. It's pretty close. But I've got the school rec center, which is pretty good. A lot of machines. All the boys are there. Honestly, that's um, the college rec center. That is the gym which I have had the highest concentration of dogs. You know, like dudes who every day I actually like go up to, dap them up. I want to know what their lift is. I want to know how their pump's going. You know, shit like that. That is just nice. You know, that is really cool to have. And if you've got a gym like that with a lot of regulars, and maybe you haven't been chatting with them that much, you know, maybe your gym is pretty kind of quiet. You know, everybody does their workout, they have their headphones in, and that's the end of it. I think you're missing out. You know, you should go up to them, say some shit. I mean, if your gym's full of, uh, I don't know, just people who really don't want you to fuck with them, then... Well, you never know until you try. You know, maybe you go up to him, hey man, what are you hitting, dude? You know, you're sitting on a bench next to him on the free weights. Hey man, maybe they're just a yapaholic. But they thought they saw you had headphones and they didn't want to talk to you. I guess I'm really just saying it's cool when you actually know the dudes. Or the, or the girls, I'm not going to disparage who you're, uh, who you're lifting around. But yeah, so that's the college rec center. Pretty good. Good amount of machines. Cool bars, racks, uh, cables, whatever. Can be a little bit packed though. Can be a little bit packed. But it's like two minutes away from where I live. Very good benefit. I always go there for cardio in the morning. Unless I'm really busy and I want to you know, just do cardio in the basement. Well, the first floor of, uh, of the apartment on the little cardio bike. So that's gym number one. Gym number two is, well, it's pretty much right next to this one that I'm headed to, Planet Fitness. Nothing wrong with Planet Fitness. I, I don't know, I just haven't gone to Planet Fitness for a while. The one, um, yeah, it's, it's, it gets a little bit hit or miss for me sometimes because if a Planet Fitness is full, like if it's, you know, <gasps> six o'clock, PM or like six or five or you know whatever and they're actually busy then you know if you're gonna bust out your tripod you're actually uh, asking for trouble maybe not legit trouble but you know I've been shut down at Planet Fitnesses before not that they're being mean I mean it's just like it's not necessarily their targeted demographic at a Planet Fitness a fucking approaching a freak just walking around with a tripod talking to himself. I can understand it. I can understand it. But usually they're pretty cool. But Planet Fitness, depending on the lift, I actually don't mind it. I'd say Planet Fitness is perfect, absolutely perfect for arms. Arms at Planet Fitness as well as shoulders, perfect, perfect gym. Back, pretty good too. Lat pull down, cable rows, a variety of back machines too. Smith machines, you can do some bent over rows if you want. Back, pretty solid. Chest, gets a little bit more constrained because you've got um, the only heavy pressing movement you got at your disposal is the incline Smith. Sometimes I want to do incline dumbbell. They've only got 75s. Now, if that's within your working weight range, good for you. You can make as many gains at Planet Fitness as you want. But I definitely think you can kind of outgrow it chest wise. But, you know, if I like Incline Smith on that day, and then I just want to do some pec deck and cable flies and cable presses, it's perfect. Legs is pretty good there, too. Usually they've got a seated and a laying hamstring curl, plus leg extensions. If I want, I'll do Smith machine squats, but sometimes I just kind of spam the leg extension, superset it with a uh, body weight sissy squat combo. It's kind of a classic leg day that I like. So, yeah, so enough of that. That's pretty good. This gym as well, pretty good. Tons of old equipment. They're actually adding some new shit. I think there's a, there, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of in the works. 
like there's new racks that are being added but they kind of have to like fuck with the ceiling tiles because it's like a rogue rack system so it's kind of going to cut into the ceiling I guess uh, maybe somebody should have measured that out uh, I think there's a hack squat there now too maybe I should actually head over here more often but another huge benefit 24 hours 24 hour operation so for me on days like today where oh my goodness I'm uh, I, don't, I think I brought this up before I am totally sick my system is totally infected with something you know I don't feel like shit or anything but I can like just feeling dude lymph nodes that's a blueberry that is a blueberry in there for sure I've got some kind of something messing with me I can tell it's making me more lethargic so I definitely get a lot of rest today apart from class and a little bit of schoolwork it was mainly get up eat back to bed eat back to bed uh, not like dead asleep of course I was just playing on my phone but yeah I definitely want to get over this if it doesn't clear up in a couple days I'll just get some antibiotics or something I kind of feel like <laughs> this is probably stupid but I feel like I kind of want to just let my body fight it off fight it off on its own it's like don't give me the medicine I don't want it I can handle it but that might be just a that just might be a brutish guy thing and maybe I'd be better off with a little bit of a some kind of something I don't know what antibiotics are called but other than that uh, oh fuck what was I even about to say yeah 24 hours lots of good equipment old school vibe this one's pretty good I'm sure it'll be nice to be in here just because it's been a while. It'll have a little bit of nostalgia factor. I think I haven't gone here in a few months. Another added benefit of going to different gyms is they're kind of, there's just different cliques, you know? Like I'll run into different people. People I see at this gym, I never see at the College Rec Center. And same thing with the Planet Fitness. I will say I'm definitely more likely to run into cooler people at more serious gyms and not as much at like a P fit. Not saying it doesn't happen though, I'm just kind of making a little bit of an observation. But uh, oh, I haven't even talked about what the lift is going to be. It's back. So for back, I am planning on doing a lift which will follow the following. Let's just say it'll, it'll hit the following criteria. I want to do some lighter, not lighter, but like moderate weight rows on either the ca see the cable or a machine and really squeeze like I can tell a lot of my rows uh, I do lift a lot of weight and I have a ton of tension on my lats which I do like like I like a set of cable rows where I'm, I'm throwing around the whole stack and I'm just destroying my back and I'm getting to the point where I can barely do any partials I really do like that I feel like it gives me a lot of fatigue you know a lot of tension partials and the uh, stretched position right let me try to think of a couple other buzzwords that make it sound cool but you know a really heavy set with partials I like those but I definitely notice that my back gets more pumped or at least I get a decent pump for sure when after maybe a few sets like that where I really load up the weight load up a ton of tension on whatever I'm hitting if after that I back off on weight a little bit and really focus on squeezing. Like, I could do two sets of pull downs where, you know, I throw the whole stack around, like, at a plate, at like as much weight as I can do for, you know, 15 reps, maybe five partials at the end. And then go lighter and really squeeze. Like, it almost feels, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a cool way to describe it. It's like when I do, I, uh, it's probably easiest to think of a dumbbell curl. You know, if you're sitting here with whatever weight for curls, you can do the motion. You know, you can go from back and forth, back and forth like this. But with a lot of my reps, especially with the lighter sets where I'm trying to focus on squeezing, I want to do the rep, of course. But when I get to the squeezed position, you know, for a bicep curl, it would be here. For a row or pull down, it would be back here. Leg extensions, it would be when my leg is fully straightened. Right, when I get to that fully contracted position, I want to get a little extra squeeze, just a little extra push. Even if it doesn't look like I'm actually moving the weight any further, that extra little squeeze 
is noticeably going to affect the pump that I get. Plus, the sets just feel more fatiguing. Not that I want to make my sets as difficult as possible for difficulty's sake, but if I do a set of dumbbell curls to failure, right, let's say I go as heavy as I can go, and I don't try to squeeze it on top, you know, maybe I could get 15 reps, just kind of throwing the weight around. But if I be a little bit more methodical with it, and I get that extra squeeze on top, and I get that extra squeeze every rep, then maybe I'll hit failure at 10 reps. You know? So you gotta think, those reps are more effective. Each one is doing more damage. I'm expending more energy, because I hit failure quicker, you know? That's kind of making me think that I wanna chill out on my really heavy, quick sets of bench. Uh, I noticed this a couple chest days ago. Usually, you know, I do my top, I work up to my top set with the warm ups, and then that first set is the first set really heavy, and I'm just throwing it around. And I get a ton of tension on my pecs. I mean, I'll, I'll start to get pumped up after two sets. But I definitely noticed that I really like the feeling of doing, you know, a couple of working sets on Incline Smith and going real slow and controlled. So, not that I think that is, you know, guaranteed a better method, but it definitely adds to the idea that I want my training to be diverse. I don't want each lift to be the same as the last one. Not only in exercise selection, but, you know, in set execution, right? Like, even if I did, so let's say I did the same back day, next back day, uh, two sets of pull downs, two sets of machine rows, uh, a set of pullover, and then another kind of row. Right? Let's say I do all those lifts today with as much weight as I can handle, you know, just throw it all around, right? That's cool. Now let's fast forward to the next back day. I can do the same, oh my goodness, exercise selection, right? The same pull downs, rows, pullovers, other row, whatever. But if rather than throwing around the weight as like the main you know variable that I'm trying to max out you know instead I go a little bit more conservative with the weight and focus on really squeezing as hard as possible I would consider that a totally different lift even if the reps were you know the same if I, even if I did 12 reps with a lighter weight really squeezing or I did 12 reps with a heavy weight kind of throwing it around just by doing it in that different way, I would consider that a completely different back day, you know? So, I guess really what I'm trying to say is make sure you change your shit up at least a little bit. Not that I think you have to shock the muscle, and like if you zoomed in on my freaking lats, they would say to you, holy, I've never done this before, fuck, I'm gonna grow. Oh, there's, he's shocking me. <laughs> you know, not that I think that exactly, but... You know, it would make sense. The whole point of your body, I mean, as a species, we're pretty fucking up there in terms of adapting to stress. You know? So if you do the same workout with the same intensity and the same reps and the same weight day after day, you're not going to make any gains from that because you're going to reach a point in your bill where, okay, I'm used to this. I can handle this. This is just normal, right? Like the dude who just fucking wakes up every day and does his business comes back home, he's not making any gains because he's not stressing his system. The whole point of going into the gym and doing your little workout is to fucking give your body a stimulus where it says, holy shit, I gotta deal with this. I gotta go home, sleep, and put all this shit back together. And, ah, fuck. If he's gonna keep hitting, if he's gonna keep hitting my lats like this, I better toughen them up, make them bigger and stronger so they can handle it. Obviously, it's not like your lats are thinking like that, but that's a pretty good way to you know, visualize it in your mind. I almost feel like that's kind of a motivating factor. Like even just thinking about it now, it's like I almost want to go into the gym and think to myself, all right, I want to hit my lats as differently and as crazily as I ever have before to ensure that once I go home and get to bed, that they're going to have to do some serious recovering, you know? So. Whatever you got to do, whatever you have to think about to get into that zone of wanting to demolish whatever muscle you're going to target that day, 
do it. Watch, uh, watch some Gojo hype TikTok edits, get in the zone, and say, holy shit, come on, and then do whatever you're going to do. So, still a couple of minutes out, but let's just get over there and get started. I already know that the gym is going to be completely dead, which sometimes I like, sometimes I don't like. It's been a while since I've been in an empty gym, so I'm sure I'm going to take advantage of having all the equipment at my disposal. But that's all I got, man. Let's get started. Alright, not my absolute gnarliest back day, but a solid, I would call, progressive back day. It's definitely stimulated all sorts of pulling movements, or uh, all sorts of pulling muscles on my rear torso. I mean, that's the whole point, man. You know, every day, do some shit, progress. You know, when uh, I'll, I'll bring this up every so often because I do get this comment a lot. It's like, what are your goals, man? What's the point of all this? You know, what's, uh, why the hell are you doing all this shit? You know, and I've covered this before. It's because I like it. You know, I found a thing where, oh, shit, all right, I like doing this. And then not only do I like doing it, but it gives me, you know, it almost gives me dividends. Get to walk around jacked, which is pretty cool. You know, just get to have a thing that I'm proficient at. You know, who doesn't fucking want to be the best? And I don't even mean, I don't mean that like a LeBron James, like, I want to be number one in the world. Like, not, not that kind of shit. It's like, even when you're a kid, it's just hardwired in your brain. Right? Everybody wants to be the dude who kicks the kickball over the fence. Everybody wants to be the dude who, when they draw something in art class, the teacher holds it up and says, guys, this is what you should be doing. You know, shit like that. You're just hardwired in your mind you know, even subconsciously, you don't even have to think about it, where to be good at something, some kind of legit skill, right, that's just going to make you feel good. You know, that's a satisfactory experience. So if you don't have anything like that, if you kind of have like an aimlessness that you feel a lot, where, you know, you, you go to work, you go to school, you play your games every day, you like you hang out with some buddies or whatever. Honestly, I mean, that's not fulfilling enough. That's not enough, at least, you know, not, I don't think it's enough. You've got to have something extra, you know, that kind of supersedes anyone else's opinion or anybody else's thoughts. You got to have something for you, which you can work on for a long time. And I'm not saying that you have to find it immediately, but, you know, I think if you have that kind of aimlessness, and honestly, I think a lot of people in, you know, my demographic, fucking youths, I feel like a lot of them have that, you know, you don't have a, you don't have a thing, you just kind of float around, you exist, and I think if you have that kind of aimlessness, that should be a call to action to at least start, I don't know, looking for something, you know, if you want cool shit to happen to you, then you've got to do shit, you know, you got to at least go you know, try whatever, right, if you like, I don't know what you might like, if you like digital, if you like music or whatever, you know, fucking download a free, uh, what's a, yeah, download a free DAW and start trying to make beats or something, you know, or just, just whatever, right? You're never going to know if you don't try. <clears throat> I think I just got lucky because I, uh, it didn't take me long to find some shit where I'm like, okay, I want to do this every day, every year, four years on end. So I got a little bit lucky. Quick, uh, Something about it had a quick connection between, well, I don't know, for me, it, with, with all this lifting stuff, I think it's just a combination of aptitude as well as, you know, enjoyment. So, something about it, it's not a challenge for me to just get up, go to the gym, have a crazy lift, come home and, you know, be happy with it. I'm, I'm Honestly, I'm happy if that's my whole day, and the rest of it, I just get to chill, you know, or just, you know, do whatever I have to do, so... If you can find something like that, it doesn't have to be lifting, but obviously since I'm talking about it in a, in a video, I'm going to be, I'm going to circle it around to lifting. If you can find something like that, then that is going to put you on a good track to, uh, you know, contentment. 
I mean, you gotta do something. You can't just float around. You know, I feel like Joey Diaz. You know, you know anybody who doesn't do nothing? They don't do nothing! Now, unlike Joey Diaz, I'm not gonna say, you know, do heroin. But, you, know, you get what I'm saying. Everybody has some kind of itch for some kind of something. And it's your responsibility to find out what that is. It's not just going to get handed to you for sure. Or else everybody would be walking around honky-dory. Well, I get to do what I want every day and it's fun. You know, I mean, you might have to take a look at your own situation and think, Okay, I better, I better change some shit up. You know, and that might not just be like, Okay, I better find something to do or just, you know, I think a lot of it is about your attitude, too. You know, how you kind of perceive yourself, others, and whatever, it's going to determine a lot about how you feel, and that's going to reflect almost directly with, you know, what you do and how well you do it. You know, are you where you are because of how you act, or are you acting how you act because of where you are? You know, like, if you have kind of like a, just a... I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Eh, fuck that. I don't. Want, I don't want to try any of that. Hey, man, you should come to the gym with us, dude. Come on, we're all going. It's, nah, I don't. I don't want, I'm just gonna stay home, man. Nah. Doesn't sound like that guy's gonna get anywhere. At least in a, a lifting context, you know. I kind of feel a little bit like I'm. I feel like I'm magnifying the whole world into whether people lift or they don't lift. But no, you get, same thing with anything, man. Hey, dude, come on, come on with us for, to go to uh, to go do whatever. You know, come with us to. Nah, I don't want to. Nah, I don't want to. Not cool. Not cool. You know, if you get more interest and enthusiasm for whatever you're doing, you're just gonna have a better time. You know. I mean, don't uh, <clears throat> don't forget, you only got so much time on the clock, right? Time is freaking ticking. So, if you've got a little something that you might think that you maybe need to be started to do, I feel like I just had an aneurysm. If you know there's something that you think that you want to start doing, you know, time is against you. So you should kind of use that as a little bit of a motivator to just start sooner rather than later. You know, and the more often that you say, yeah, I'll do it later, I mean, yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. So I think that's all I got to say about that. It's my little, uh, my little call to action speech. But... Getting back to the lift, I like those pull downs. Honestly, I would have. There was another guy floating around in there. I should have gone up to him and asked him for a spot. I like standard pull downs on my own, but I really like assisted pull downs, where you know, let's say I get to rep ten, and I start to you know not be able to pull the bar as deep. You know, rather than maybe getting my nose height, I can only get to like the brim of my hat height, and then you know the top of my head height on those partials. You know, if I can have a guy grab onto the bar and push it down those extra few inches, something about the burn with those assisted partials I just really love. Yeah, I should have done that. But those rows felt pretty good. Honestly, they... Uh, like the rowing machine. I like that one, but really it's a little bit too funky. Like something about the angle, it's... I don't know, it's just kind of weird. You know, when you do a hammer strength row, you're kind of rowing up in like an arch like the bar is moving like this and kind of up towards your shoulders if you can imagine but with that one it was kind of like a downward sweep like I'm pulling down like this into the row and I don't know something about that did not really rub me the right way I felt a lot of fatigue on my mid traps like I could get a really good stretch but the contraction honestly wasn't really there like I, I could feel it of course but it didn't really get my whole upper mid back it was kind of mainly, you don't, well, it felt like just the top of my lats and a little bit of the lower traps. That's where I felt the most activation. That's probably why, why, I, uh, why I wanted to do that last set of seated rows, just because I know that's a rowing movement, which is going to really bias my upper back. I wasn't thinking about that consciously when I made that exercise choice, but I guess subconsciously I was like, all right, this is what I know I want to do to really finish off the, uh, really finish off the back day. <coughs> now all I gotta go home is, or now all I gotta do is go home, eat some treats, probably have one of those steaks plus a baguette, maybe half a baguette, 
some olive oil, some salt, pepper flakes. I have an abundance of laundry. It's, uh, it's frankly disturbing how much room of, uh, well, how much room in my room is just taken up by clean, unfolded laundry. It could be worse, it could be dirty, but I, I'm fucking like, I guess I'm kind of making excuses. Obviously today I just slept all day, I could have done it whenever. But I keep getting into this rut of like, okay, I should do it. No oh, crap, but I also got to do this. And then I kind of just put it off. Not ideal. Not freaking ideal. But other than that, this week I've got a couple of loose ends to tie up assignment-wise. I think I brought this up earlier. That is going to take a little bit of direct effort. But once it's over... I get a solid, yeah, shit, almost, uh, almost two months, months and a half. Well, I'm taking an online class over, over January, but that's only going to take maybe 45 minutes a, a day that that's going on. So that's like nothing. Yeah. Then I've got that whole time to just focus on downing my food. I am fucking light today. Shit. Oof. Over these next three days, I'm definitely going to pack on the way to get back to my fully bulked state. I'm not so concerned with this little blip, considering it is just the start of the bulk. <coughs> but you know, now I'm locking into you know, my legit four, no, no, not four, you know, 5,000 calorie days. And yeah, I gotta make sure that that intake does not fluctuate in the slightest, at least going below. You know, so every day, the gas tank of my body is going to burn that many. Well, let's say every day that my gas tank has to be filled up with 5,000 calories. And I do not want to miss a single day. And then, assuming I hit that mark, we're going to turn into a freak in no time. Absolutely freaking no time at all. So plan for tomorrow is probably just going to be... Eh, I might throw some buys in too. Nothing crazy, but maybe just like some 30s or something. So that'll be a, a full arm pump. And then definitely going to add some forearms too. I might chill out on the back of my forearms. You know, like this kind of shit. These little, uh, oh, that's kind of funky right there. Yeah, all this. But I really want to build up this bottom part, you know, way down here. I think I want that to be absolutely, absolutely awe-inspiring. Of a, uh, of a forearm. If you want some hype to see just how crazy forearms can look, I got two words for you. Lee Priest. Whoa! Holy shit. I guess in a more recent sense, Ramon Dino. But something, since he's like a tall dude, the proportions make his forearms look a little bit more normal. Even though they are bigger than your calves. They're probably bigger than my calves, too. Holy shit. There's freaks out there, man. Try to catch up to them in any way you can. And I think that's all I gotta say. I think this ended up being a long one, too. We, uh, we're back to regularly scheduled clips. At least until the next, you know, trip to wherever. When I've gotta record some of these in advance. But, full day of eating, it will happen. I am a little bit busy for the next little while. So it might not happen this week. But don't worry, I'll get you a couple as this bulk progresses. I'm sure you'll love to see what kind of random treats I uh, throw down the gullet. <coughs> so now all I gotta do is go home, probably sit in the shower for a while, get a little bit decongested. I would love a sauna or like a steam room. That would do me good right now, but what are you gonna do? So, down my vitamins meal, probably another meal as well, get some rest, and then tomorrow, do all my normal shit, arms in the evening, cardio in the morning, obviously, we'll just leave it at that, and uh, fuck man, that's the end of it, let's keep this bulk running strong, 260 in no time, so I'll fucking see you next time. I am excited to get a complete arm pump 
buys included. I've been chilling out on them a little bit just because I can kind of tell that the right one had like a little bit of a slight tweak, a slight twinge. I'm starting to think it's just like a, uh, or that it was just like some kind of pinched nerve or something like that. Because it doesn't feel like, I mean, of course, strength-wise, compromised, not at all. I can just kind of feel a little bit of a twinge. I think what I really need to be doing, I've kind of been doing this a little bit, but not as much as I should. I need like a wooden, like a dowel or like something, you know, like a lacrosse ball style. Maybe I'll get one of those, like, massage guns. That'd probably do me some good, too. And just fucking drill into it break up whatever's been going on down there the only other kind of recurring twinge that I seem to have kind of come in and out of my training is this forearm right in here kind of where the forearm like this kind of chunk of meat starts to meet the elbow something about in there every so often it'll get kind of rough where sometimes curling will fuck with it, or even pressing, which really sucks. It's, a uh, yeah, it must just be, honestly, that kind of sounds like tennis elbow. I don't even really know what tennis elbow is, though. I kind of always assumed that was, like, stuff down here on your actual elbow itself. But, you know, no matter. Again, of course, you know, anything that hurts, for the most part, you're not going to want to be doing... But you also have to kind of take some initiative and try to figure out what's going on. You know, it only takes a couple of Google searches to look up like, okay, wait, someone else has had the same issue as me. All right, cool. How do they fix it? You know, I remember looking up the same shit with the thing I had with my forearm, be it like a, I don't know, pinch nerve or some kind of twinge or whatever. And I was like, how the hell do I get rid of this? This is fucking me. And I just looked up some video, found a power lifter, and he's like, you know, same shit happens to me. Uh, whenever it kind of, you know, flares up, he just takes like a well, like a wooden rod, like a dowel or something, and just fucking grinds the fuck out of his forearm. Not in a bad way, of course, but like in a real deep tissue massage kind of way. And then he's all right. You know? So more often, actually, fucking probably 99.9% .9 of the time, anytime you're going through some kind of situation <clears throat> you know, somebody else has gone through the exact same thing and now more likely than not you can just look it up and see that somebody posted about it so you know you can apply that to <coughs> you know whatever part of your training if you're having trouble getting your meals down you know look up fucking how to eat more calories you know shit like that I'm uh, personally I don't like rely on coaches or dietitians and stuff like that. I kind of go about it my own way that I like. I'm not saying that I think I'm on their level of like intelligence or anything like that. I'm just saying I kind of get the idea of the basic framework. But, you know, dudes who have been doing this for a long time, like coaches and stuff like that, they have a lot of inside info, you know, and a lot of them just post this shit online. You know, I'll see, uh, I forget the dude. Super smart though. I, uh, Whenever I see his clips and he's saying some shit, I'm always like, okay, that actually sounds kind of smart. And he's like, he's talking about putting, you know, sugar uh, dextrose in, uh, you know, like sushi rice to make it easier to get down. You know, shit like that. It's not something you may even come across, but, well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not something you're just going to figure out on your own. So I think what I'm really trying to say is if you ever run into any kind of problem or situation or whatever in terms of your training, you know, I guess you could do this with anything, but of course if I'm talking about something in the video, it's going to be, you know, about weightlifting, about muscle growth, then, you know, just look it up, try to figure out an answer for yourself. The last thing you want to do is just be locked into whatever fucking problem you have and have that hinder your progress. Oh, I can't get my meals in. Fuck. Well, I guess I'm just the type of guy who can't eat his food. And then, you know, you never break 200 pounds. Not ideal. Not freaking ideal. So, uh, yeah, enough of that little... <clears throat> enough of that little speech. 
Plan for arms is going to be the same as normal. Pushdowns of a few varieties, as well as, well, that's honestly all I can say for sure. I'll, you know, I'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do some dips. Machine dips, of course. I think body weight dips are a little bit too chest dominant, so I kind of stay away from them for triceps. But a dip machine, I have no problem with. You know, I love slamming the dip machine. Especially sometimes with like a, uh, oh my god, are these guys going to let me fucking turn? <laughs> Especially with like a drop set sometimes. A dip machine can be very nice. They're kind of hit or miss though, you know? Like, sometimes I'll do a dip machine and I just, I get like all chest and I really just can't squeeze my triceps. The best dip machine I've ever used was in a, a gym in Michigan. It was, uh, oh fuck, it was in Patoxki. I need to go back there. That gym was sick. Because it had a... Uh, I've brought this up before, too. It's got a first floor that was, like, pretty commercial. Kind of... Um, <clears throat> kind of L.A. fitness style. You know, just cardio machines, cables, dumbbells, uh, other weight machines. You know, just normal shit. And then it had a basement, which had a little bit more hardcore stuff. Still machines, but that's where all the power racks were. The really heavy dumbbells. And there's this dip machine. It must have been from the fucking 90s. Smooth. You actually buckled yourself in. So, oh, they knew what they were doing back then. I think I kind of, like, I'm not going to say it doesn't work. And I use machines that are you know, cool. It's not like I speak for every lifter in the world. But a lot of newer machines and gyms, like, I kind of... They, don't, they seem just a little bit redundant sometimes. You know, I see a lot of, um, I don't know what the brand is, maybe Nautilus? I don't know. A lot of the machines where the seat moves as you do a rep, like as you're doing a chest press, like the seat also moves. Uh, it's, I don't know, man. I mean, I think you're losing sight of the point by adding all this extra complexity. Of course, I'm not a you know, an exercise machine engineer, so they know what they're doing more than me. But as the as the practitioner, as the guy using them, I feel like I've got a little bit of an opinion to say. A little bit of a valid point to make. You know? Plus, I mean, I'm sure you've noticed, if you've used an old pec deck, real simple, just metal handles, you know, just fuck it's got the cable stack, adjusts and that's it. Real simple. Ah, Usually, man, I like those better. Just better feel. Something that's, you know, can't beat the basics. Cannot beat the basics. <clears throat> but, uh, oh, it's, let's get back to the training. So, push downs. Yeah, single arm, double arm, rope, straight bar. Uh, overhead dumbbell for sure. What else? Yeah, it's, we'll see. You know, probably five, six sets. As many as I feel is enough to stimulate some growth, plus get a full pump. It's not like I just get a pump and then I say, okay, the lift is over. I kind of base it off of like how hard the sets were, how fatigued I am. Just kind of overall subjective, you know, grading of how the lift just went. And that's kind of based off of, you know, years upon years of lifts. So... After tries are done, buys is just going to be the same thing, but, you know, with curls. Right? Dumbbell, easy bar, cable, uh, preacher, you know, we'll just have to see. I am open to, what am I open to? Inspiration? No, that doesn't sound right. You get the idea. I got a basic gist of what I'm going to do, but I'm not locked into any specific movements or exercises or reps or styles or whatever. You know, once I get in there and I kind of see how I feel, I'll kind of use that as a starting point to decide, okay, I know a set of standing dumbbell curls is going to feel pretty good right now. And a set of preacher curls, eh, that might not feel that. That might not be that good. Maybe I'll skip those and do, you know, something else. And I think that just kind of comes with, with training experience. So I think enough... Uh, Enough yapping about it and enough chit-chat. 
Let's just get in there, park, and uh, get started. Isn't that nice? Isn't that just a nice way to finish the day? That cheeky little arm pump, some heavy curls, some heavy pushdowns, some assisted reps beyond failure. You know, every other buzzword under the sun to describe a quality workout. That is very nice. And I have got a pint of either strawberry. Actually, no, I think it's more than a, I can't remember how much. I, uh, but in the last grocery haul, I got some strawberry and some vanilla ice cream. The strawberry one is kind of calling my name. I think that will pair quite nicely with a pound of top sirloin steak, as well as potentially some electrolyte packets to replenish some of the sodium and potassium and whatever else I sweat it out during that lift. That will definitely do me good. Now when it comes to dairy consumption, if you're unfortunate enough to not be able to handle it in terms of your gut, then I am not envious of you. I fucking love ice cream. Chocolate milk, strawberry milk, cereal. I guess if it really fucks you, just get some lactate or get some of those enzymes to break down the lactose for you. But yeah, it still kind of sucks that you kind of have to go through that roundabout step. So yeah, that's all my plan is for tonight. I don't have a ton of work except for just studying for next week, which, oish, yeah, I definitely gonna have a lot of shit to do. I think I'll start tomorrow. That'll be a good, yeah, it'll be a good day to start. Not tonight, not tonight. Tonight is for me to get nice and cozy, eat my ice cream, watch The Sopranos, I'm getting close to the end, and then just freaking chill. I'm really waiting for some more episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen to come out, plus Invincible. Oof, dude, Invincible is getting good. I, um, I'm not going to read it. I know that the, the comics go so far into the story, but I think I'll just wait and watch it as it comes out. So, plan for tomorrow is going to be legs, hamstrings, quads, same as normal. Might add some pressing, may not. Might just do a lot of leg extensions. <sighs> a lot of leg extensions sort of combined into a superset with uh, sissy squats. Those have been absolutely destroying my quads lately. I haven't been doing them for a couple of weeks. I really could not tell you why. It is a sick superset, and I can say that with certainty. Same thing with hamstring curls straight into kind of light RDLs, but I don't really love doing RDLs with a like with free weights. I like doing RDLs ideally with a dedicated cable RDL machine where you know, actually gets a stand on a platform, bend over, grab some handles, get a really good stretch. And something about the movement or like the the strength curve of the cables, it just makes the RDL feel way easier to squeeze on my hamstrings rather than, you know, my glutes and lower back. It's, you know, the whole point <sighs> The whole point of my leg days at least is you know, I want to slam my hamstrings, I want to destroy my quads so that my thigh itself thickens up, but I don't want to hit anything else. You know, just like how I was talking about uh, straps on those heavy dumbbell curls, how if I didn't use them, then my forearms would come into play a little bit too much. You know, same thing with, uh, with quads and hamstrings. You know, I kind of judge movements based upon you know, how much they actually hit the targeted muscle. That's why I don't squat flat-footed, because when I squat with heels elevated, it lets me put way more tension on my quads rather than my glutes. When I squat with flat feet, or when I do a uh, leg press, <sighs> I feel like I get an even mix of quad and glute activation. And I do not need bigger glutes. They're big enough. I want my quads and my hamstrings to really thicken up. I don't, uh, I don't need any, I don't need a bigger dump truck. So, 
One thing I was getting ready to say, I think I was going to say this on the way here, but I kind of forgot. Let's, uh, let me ask you this. Do you have your whole year planned out? How far ahead in advance do you have something that you want to progress in planned, you know, on a day-by-day -day basis? Right? How far ahead? Maybe a week? Maybe a month? You know, maybe not at all? You got to work on that. I'm a little bit spoiled because my, I mean, my year, honestly, my next few years, they're already lined up and scheduled. Now, it's a pretty simple schedule, but by sticking to it, you know, I can make pretty solid progress. And the only thing on that schedule is, you know, eat my food and go to the gym. So, as long as I hit those two goals every day, I know that I'm doing something right. And honestly, they don't even really feel like goals just because I want to do them, you know? Like if somebody didn't even care about working out at all, and they were like forced to you know, do all these lifts and eat all their food and track their macros and whatever, if they didn't actually want to do it, dude, this, would, <laughs> this shit would be a fucking challenge, you know? But if you actually want results, then you should be able to have the kind of firm enough grasp on reality to understand that your effort in you know, going to the gym, doing your macros, eating your meals, hitting your protein, whatever else, all that shit is going to direct, no, is going to correlate directly with your fucking progress. You know? So it should hype you up to do it. That's, uh, that's how I feel about the matter at least. But now I just get to go home, eat, chill, maybe fold my laundry, maybe not. It's not going to affect the pump. And then I get cardio in the morning. <sighs> I'm definitely going to be ready for bed after I finish my meals. So, that's all I got. I'll see you next time. First. And usually, well, I don't know, it kind of depends. All right, if I get a bunch of schoolwork or projects and studying, I don't know. Maybe you try to start it during the day. But if I've got the choice, I, I want to get my lift done. I want to finish my uh, finish what I want to do first, and then be able to spend the rest of the night doing, you know, all my other bullshit. But plan for chest should be a pretty quick lift, honestly. I mean, just one muscle group. Once I get warmed up, first working set to last working set, I mean, that might only be thirty minutes. I'm getting a little tired of incline barbell, though. That's uh, that's my only gripe with this <clears throat> with this gym. Is uh, they got rid of their two Smith machines, which they used to have, and these two Smith machines were fucking sick because they weren't like the. Uh, they're fine, but you know the Smith machines are like a Planet Fitness or the Life Fitness Smith machines, kind of a thicker bar. You know those are cool. Nothing wrong with them. I mean, I used them before. I don't have too much of a problem. But these were some old school Smiths where, like, it was just a barbell that was on rails. You know, so if you dropped it, the, uh, I think it still had counterweights just a little bit, but they weren't that helpful. So it really felt like you were just pressing a barbell. It just happened to be locked onto the path of a Smith machine. That. That is one of my favorite movements. Just because, you know, I can kind of hit it in two ways. Like, when I see a Smith machine, it kind of calls me to do two kinds of sets. I could go, you know, well, both sets I'm going to go heavy. But I can go slow and controlled and really get a good squeeze throughout the whole motion of the movement. And the fact that it's a Smith machine, you know, you can hit failure on... A bench much quicker than you can on a Smith you know because you don't have to worry about your stabilizers getting fried out or anything like that you know, if you've done a good amount of sets on Smith and on incline barbell then you know you can kind of muscle through a couple extra reps on the Smith machine or really any kind of machine compared to what you can do on uh, free weights so you know if they had a Smith here I think I think my first set would maybe be 
Heavy, slow, controlled. Really get a good squeeze. A lot of time under tension. Uh, I, I don't really think about that kind of thing when I'm actually training, but you know, it's definitely legit. By the time I finish a slow set of like eight reps with, I don't know, 300 whatever on the Smith, I'm feeling it. But I can also do it in a complete opposite way where I just really throw the weight around as quick as I can. So, you know, if I take a weight which I could get maybe eight reps to failure with slowly, then, you know, maybe the next set I could get 15 reps, including some partials, of course, and really just kind of throw it around quick. So, you know, just kind of two different styles, which in either case always gives me a really good amount of fatigue. And, you know, it always puts me on track to getting a good chest pump once I, uh, well, not even once I start doing cable flies or pec deck. I mean, by the time I'm done with my pressing, I'm still like, eesh, probably more than halfway to fully pumped. And then moving on to more concentration, isolation movements, that just puts the finishing touches on them. So, midday, I don't think it's going to be too busy in here, which that would be good for me. I think prime time rush hour, at least at most college rec centers, and really I guess any gyms in general, weekdays is going to be like probably 5 to... Probably five to seven. That's uh, if you go to the gym at five to seven ish, and then you say, well, "Why is it so busy in here? What what's going on?" Come on, you should know this. You should know this already. So if you got to take a little bit of extra time waiting for a bench, then shit, man, maybe you should have came in earlier. So I, uh, I'll see how I feel after I do my little cable warm up. You know, before any kind of chest pressing or whatnot, I always sit on the cable and get my triceps warm, rear delts, rotator cuff, do a little bit of rowing action just to get my back warmed up too. Since every time you press, you know, sure you're pressing off the bench, but you're also pressing off your back, so you're going to want to be warm. Chest is the movement which I take the most time and diligence to warm up, because not even just like based on what other people say, I've learned from experience that if I don't have a proper warm up for my whole upper body torso pressing action with my shoulders and rotator cuffs and everything else, then I am much more prone to tweakage. So I, uh, I definitely take care to spend my time well, making sure I kind of prep everything that's going to come into play before I, you know, try to load on hundreds upon hundreds of pounds straight onto my fucking, you know, shoulder joint. The last thing you want to do is do three reps of, you know, X amount of weight, and then here, ooh, not ideal. That's, uh, that's negative lifting ASMR. But time is of the essence. Let's just get in there and get started. I would go so far as to call that a lift with satisfactory intensity. Now, my actual, like, numerical performance, I'm, I'll be real with you, a little bit below par for me right now. Um, not making excuses, but I do think potential sickness might be kind of fucking with me. But. Even though I may have felt a little bit weak, <laughs> oh my goodness! Even though I may have felt a little bit weaker than peak strength, those sets were still about as hard as I could push it. Those machine chest press sets were also pretty good. I uh, I should have asked the guy I was working in with to give me some help with some assisted reps. That would have been that would have been nice. One thing, uh, yeah, when I. I swear it's these new peck flies. They're just not awesome, you know? Like every time, so this gym used to have an old school peck fly. We're talking 90s. You know, the handle wasn't like a plastic rubberized, you know, ergonomic piece of whatever. It was just a fucking piece of steel with some paint on it, of course. Whole thing nice and rugged. Stack was 
well, the sack wasn't like insanely heavy, but you could throw a plate on the side of it and, you know, really do a hard set of like 15 to legit failure. Oh, dude. And you know what they do with it? Eh. We, I, uh, I swear, they must have just thought, eh, it's kind of dirty, it's old, eh, it's all grungy, let's replace it with a brand spanking new one. You know, let's spend X amount of money on a brand spanking new one. Three times as, uh, or, what's the, one third the quality, and honestly, sometimes even less than one third of the enjoyment of the reps. Uh, I may just be speaking out of, uh, I mean, I'm definitely speaking out of opinion. I'm sure some people love the new one and didn't like the old one, so maybe this isn't necessarily an accurate, uh, like, display of information, and it's just a personal rant or something I'm a little bit upset about. But either way, for me, not awesome. Because what'll happen is with some of these newer pec decks, they kind of pinch my shoulder a little bit. It's just kind of a weird feeling. Like I try to, I went to warm up on a pec deck after those, uh, yeah, after those sets of incline barbell. And I mean, honestly, like something about doing the reps, it kind of just put a weird pressure on like my collarbone. I just, I don't know, man. It's not, at least for my build specifically, not ergonomic. But cables, uh, oh yeah, that was the whole point of me bringing this up. So instead of doing the machine pec deck flies, cable flies always feel pretty comfortable for me. So if you got a pec deck that you don't really love, bust some cable flies out. Cannot beat the basics. Cable flies are... Pretty freaking cool. And they kind of have, like, like pec, pec decks are cool. It's kind of constant tension just because of the way the, uh, like, machine and the pulley and the lever arm works. Like, if you were to put a scale on your palm in between your hand and the handle, when you're down here, if you lift the weight, it'll be the same amount of force as up here for the most part. You know, some of these new fancier, uh... I don't know what they're called. They have kind of like adjustable strength curves for the machine. But for the most part, with a pec deck, the force is pretty linear throughout the motion. But I don't know if you can really understand where I'm coming from with this, but when you do cable flies with, uh, with the cables right out to your left and right side and you're standing right in the middle, it's uh, something about that strength curve. I love it because, I mean, the tension on my pecs, it's kind of, I don't know, when I get to the top of the rep, I'm pulling the handles directly towards each other like this. So my shoulders don't can't come into play, you know, nothing. It's all chest. And then it gets lighter progressively as I get over here because more and more of the force isn't being, you know, transferred to my pecs themselves. It's just, you know, in my shoulder blade and kind of through like my skeletal system. In my mind, I'm kind of envisioning what I'm talking about. So if, if you can't really follow it, I don't blame you. But this is another kind of point that I... I don't know how many times I've said this, but definitely worth thinking about. You know, I think the general populace... Like, just the... Uh, well, I'll say this. The lack of knowledge about your anatomy, I think that is kind of fucking prevalent in... A, at least in the layman lifter demographic. You know, like, it's like that meme where it's like, okay, is your friend a real lifter or not? Which one of these movements hits chest? And it's like four exercises, like fucking push downs or lat pull downs or like bench press or whatever else. And like, you know, the amount of people that I think get that wrong and just don't really know, I, uh, it's a little bit disappointing. And I'm not saying that's everybody, but I think having a little bit of a firm grasp on what muscles come into play, not even during specific exercises, but just in specific movements of your body, like being able to kind of visualize that in your mind is going to help you squeeze your sets and like just kind of orientate yourself and, you know, adjust the seat and position of certain machines in a way that the movements really feel comfortable for you. 
Like I've heard dudes talk about how like they can they hate a seated hamstring curl because it just I don't know it just never feels right and whatever. And I ask them like you know how how often do you try to adjust the seat? You know, and they're like well, I don't know I just kind of sit down and do it. It's just, and like I, I look at the settings that they use. This is not a rare this is not a often circumstance, but I have I've talked to at least one dude like this, and I saw the settings he was using like how he put the seat up and everything else, and I'm like. I, of course, I didn't say this. I wouldn't be mean, but I was like, "Dude, what the fuck?" You know, <laughs> like with stuff like that, you want to or with a leg extension, right? The pad pivots around a little point, which you can see, right? So you should try to adjust the seat so that your knee, you know, where your actual leg bends and pivots, lines up with that, you know. So the machine actually kind of flows with your body, because a lot of fucking machines. If you don't have the settings right, or maybe you're a little bit of a taller dude or a little bit of a shorter dude, and you know it's sometimes it's a little funky. Not only is it not going to be a super good or like optimal set because you know you're kind of fighting against the machine instead of working with it, but I mean it's just you could potentially freaking hurt yourself. You know, I could totally mess myself up if I tried to do like a certain kind of seated machine curl and I had the height set totally wrong and it would just like wrench my forearm in like a freaking brutal kind of way you know like that's kind of stuff you gotta watch out for but basic premise that I'm trying to get at if you're doing a lat pull down don't just think about pulling the bar to your chin try to think about pulling your lats tighter into your spine or like you know internally kind of pivoting your shoulder blade and stuff like that and I don't want you to try to think about that if you're a total beginner, but as you lift and as you progressively fucking, you know, get better and better at understanding and feeling how shit contracts and, you know, whatever else, I mean, when I, at this point now, it's, I mean, every day I end up re-watching my workouts because I got to go back and edit the videos. And while I'm watching the set, whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, like if I'm doing pull downs... I'll kind of like fucking instinctively like f tighten my lats behind me or as I'm uh oh man yeah it's I was just kind of daydreaming in class we were watching some presentations and it didn't necessarily require 100% attention so like a little bit of a delinquent I was kind of dozing off and while I was half asleep I was kind of dreaming that I was doing leg extensions you know like when you get to the point that when you dream you literally dream about the lift that you're going to do the next day. And you're like, in your mind, you almost like feel yourself doing the sets and stuff like that. I mean, I won't say that's a good sign, but I will say that's probably correlated with a lot of training experience and training obsession, which in the context of long-term progress, those are some good traits to freaking have. I, uh, I believe that firmly so plan now is get to this last class only a little bit late I'm gonna you know go home park and zip over on the electric bike which I know is kind of redundant because I always hype up doing cardio but I don't think so you know it's like <laughs> we all know how annoying it is when somebody's like oh it's, you want to help move this that and the other I mean get your workout in for the day no come on Right, I want to do my cardio in a dedicated time, in a dedicated uh, session, and the rest of the day, dude, I want to fucking chill, right? It's a, it's not a rare circumstance for you to see me take the elevator up one flight of steps. So, again, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, whatever. That's how I roll. But that's all I got. Solid chest day. I can tell I'm probably going to feel it a little bit in the morning, potentially. Not that that's, you know, necessarily a sign that it was a good lift or a bad lift, but just kind of based on the kind of fatigue and burn I'm feeling now, I might feel just a little bit of tenderness tomorrow. So, cardio in the morning, followed by a back workout in the evening, which I'm pretty hyped up about. I'm going to make sure I slam some... Uh, I don't know what I want to slam. I'm not sure what gym I'm going to go to tomorrow either, so that'll kind of determine what the lift looks like. You know, if I go hit up Metro Fitness, 
then definitely going to get some hammer strength pull downs and rows and um, you know stuff like that but if I just go to the Y then it's going to be a lot of single arm cable pull downs and maybe some machine rows and I might add some dumbbell rows in too I feel like I've been uh, I feel like I've been skipping those for a little bit too long I don't love them but I do love training variability so don't get uh, don't let your workouts get too stale but that's uh, that's enough of my little ramble go eat your food go do your cardio go lift your weights holy I folded all my laundry can you believe it oh my God. I was oh, I put it all out in my bed so I so I would have to fold it before I could go to sleep put on uh, the first part of berserk redux got about halfway through it before I was done I got a good night's rest last night. So, uh, all right, now, now I'm really just rambling. I'll see you next time, man. I think I need to be wearing a gosh dang Planet Fitness shirt. We're doing two Planet Fitness days back to back. And honestly, I mean, these are probably the two days which I would like to go to Planet Fitness the most for. So yesterday was back. You know, they've got normal pull-downs, cable rows, machine rows, just general cable stacks. I can get a pretty solid, sophisticated, uh, perfectly executed back workout with those pieces of equipment at my disposal. Honestly, I mean, if I just had a pull-up bar and, well, I guess that wouldn't be ideal. But if all I had was a pull-up bar and, like... I don't know, maybe something heavy. Weights or I don't know, whatever. You could come up with a home gym cinder block looking dumbbell and do some heavy dumbbell rows. I think you could build a pretty good back. You don't need too much for back. Like as long as you can you know, do some shit where you can pull like this or pull like this with load, you know, I think you're doing something right. So no matter how many different kinds of pull downs or pullovers and rows that I do, at the end of the day, all of those movements are still just, you know, here to here or here to here. With some variation in angle and also, you know, weight and style of set, but you get what I'm saying. You know, if you can break down a muscle group into the core components of what you have to do to stimulate that muscle, then it's gonna make it much easier for you to kind of come up with I don't want to say new workouts, but sort of understand what exercises make sense at certain times and, you know, which ones you kind of want to flow through while you're lifting. So when it comes to triceps, I was about to say chest, when it comes to triceps and biceps, I mean, you know, pretty basic activation in terms of what the uh, muscles contraction does, right? When you fucking flex your biceps, you can bend your arm. When you flex your triceps, you straighten your arm. So, no matter what kind of movements you do, as long as you fulfill that little uh, requirement, then you're probably doing something right. Couple that with a good amount of weight plus a burn, and then you finish your however many sets with a good pump. I think you're in the green zone. I think you're in the the green for growth zone. <clears throat> so, triceps. Probably gonna be just the same shit as normal, you know. Uh, yeah, push downs, single arm, double arm, maybe a little bit of a rope just for a squeeze. I really like sometimes doing some underhanded D handle extensions, kind of rope style. I'll probably, if I do them, I'll explain them when I do them. <clears throat> and then overhead dumbbell just to really stretch the long head. After, you know, however many sets of that, probably six-ish, I'll be able to call it and say triceps are, triceps have been pumped into oblivion. And then, just move on to buys. And buys are much simpler, you know? Whether or not I want to do dumbbells, or cables, or easy bar, or machine curls, like I was just saying a second ago, here to here, right? You know, I'll do different curls, too. Uh, just because a dumbbell curl is going to feel different than like a machine curl or maybe I'll be able to do the reps a little bit slower and controlled on a cable 
and get a much better squeeze. But, you know, for the most part, still, it's just bending at my arm, you know, trying to get a good burn on my bicep. So, I mean, I guess that's all I'm going to try to say there. Now, if you've watched any of these arm days, or I guess there's a couple back and bicep workouts way back when, but I'm sure you'll notice, or if you don't, then maybe hearing this you'll think about it. You never see me doing reverse curls in my bicep workouts, right? And you're never going to really catch me doing hammer curls either because as far as I'm concerned, when I'm hitting biceps, I want to just hit biceps. So for me to do hammer curls or you know, reverse grip curls like this, it's just getting so much form in the equation, like this big chunk of meat right here, the... Uh, and everybody loves saying it in the comments, the brachioradialis, or, you know, whatever. It's, uh, it can be overdeveloped. So, and honestly, my forearms are not too small already. I really want my biceps and my triceps to catch up, and uh, I don't want to say overpower, but I do want much bigger arms. So I don't want to waste energy and also just, you know, make my arms a little bit more disproportionate by slamming this part of my forearm. Because even though it is a part of my forearm, it's still taking over a lot of your, uh, a lot of my curling force, a lot of my curling strength. Just because, you know, these muscles are pretty much individual to the forearm. They don't really come into play with like a curl. But this one right here, obviously it attaches down here at your forearm and gets all the way up here into your upper arm. So that's why when you do a reverse curl like that, you know, you can actually work that back part of your forearm. But I guess main point I'm trying to say, when I'm hitting buys, I just want to hit buys. So if I wanted to do some direct forearm work like that, maybe at the end of the workout I would. But that's just kind of something which you're going to have to look at your own build and think, all right, what's, uh, what's ahead of the game? Forearms, biceps, tries, whatever. Try to get everything in proportion. Now, of course, you also have to couple that with all right, I want to get everything as big and freaky as possible. So there is a, a middle ground, which, I mean, it's just kind of up to you to find. So I think that's all I got to say there. It's uh, 7.30 now. Uh, arms does not take me that long. Uh, I, I'll say the time that I start the first working set, because, of course, I got to get in there, put my stuff away, do a couple warm-ups for tries before I actually get into the first set of whatever. But I don't think, well, I know triceps isn't going to take more than maybe 20 or something minutes. And same thing for buys. So I'm going to be out of here. I'm going to be out of here before you can say, let's go check the pump. Maybe a little bit longer than that, but you get what I'm, you get what I'm getting. At. So uh, let's just get on there. I forgot to talk about how long I was actually lifting for. Whoops. I mean, I got there about 7.30, took maybe a 15-ish minute warm-up, including, you know, putting my stuff in the locker and, you know, sitting there getting ready. And then a little bit of a pose down, so now it's 8.47. It's about an hour lift, you know. I don't think, I mean, I've brought this up before, when it comes to volume, you don't really have to be in here forever, you know. I mean, the whole goal of the workout is to get in, do as much work as necessary to stimulate growth and then you know leave because you want to kind of uh, the way I think about it is like this uh, and I'm a little I'm not like a hard believer because I know that if I come in and do three crazy sets of biceps or if I do ten crazy sets of biceps honestly I still think I'll make some progress on either one of those situations but as a basic kind of like fundamental idea you know, I think about going to the gym like, what is it like? I guess I can't really, oh, yeah, <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, crypto style or stock market. You're in the gym and basically, in my mind, I imagine you going to the gym, you got chest on the agenda, you bought in at the dip. 
you bought in at the dip and as you're working out and as you're doing hard set after hard set it's climbing it's climbing you, you got in a bitcoin at 20,000 now it's at 50 it's climbing it's climbing it's climbing you know eventually you get that peak of you know the effectiveness of the workout and that's when you want to sell that's when you want to say all right I've done enough that was a good workout I don't want to over stimulate my system over stress it you know that's I did the perfect amount and then leave before the crash now I don't think it's that sharp because I've seen dudes who get huge I mean we've all heard Mike Mentzer and everybody who he's influenced there's dudes out there doing two sets a week they're making gains and then there's dudes doing fucking like 50 sets a week and they're also making gains you know so when it comes to training uh, I think the range of which stimulus covers it's very wide so that's kinda why I don't really love saying like you have to do it this way or you know you have to do this amount of volume or this amount of sets it's kind of a subjective thing man based on your build you know like if you do fucking 10 sets a, a workout really hard and you're making gains Guess what? You're doing it right. You know, uh, apart from the fact that maybe you could have a little bit of a better routine, uh, to an extent, I kind of want to say, don't fix it if it's not broken. You know, if you start to hit a plateau and you're really eating enough food and you're resting well, then maybe that's where you got to look at your training and say, okay, something's off. I know I'm eating enough. I know I'm sleeping enough. So I got to change something about the training, right? But as long as you go into the gym and you really go hard. I think you're good training wise you know what really is gonna stop you from making gains weight weight wise you know muscle wise uh, I was just talking to a dude in there today you know what do you what do I do when my kind of newbie gains start to slow down you gotta fucking make sure you keep eating man clearly you've been working out in such a way that it's stimulating some muscle growth you know whether it's absolutely perfect or maybe a little bit more in like the mediocre range of effectiveness you're still growing muscle Obviously, you want to approach that perfect style of training. You'll not just you get what I'm saying, right? You want to train hard, but you know, if I only ate 2,000 calories from now onward, I'm going to shrink down to fucking like 190. Now, granted, that would be a pretty lean 190 for sure, but I would never be able to break, you know, however much weight my new maintenance weight would be because I'm just not eating enough food. You know, I could try. I could uh. Let's split me into two realities where I keep training like I am and I only eat that 2,000 calories. But maybe I train twice as hard. That's even possible. Twice as hard now. But I only eat, you know, this, many, this much food. You know, my 2,000, 2,500 calories, whatever. Or I train half as hard, but I eat, you know, a fucking five, 6,000 calories. That dude training half as hard, but he's eating. You know, he's going to get a little bit bigger. Now, that is not an excuse right I do not want you to take that as though you should not train hard and just try to eat all the time that is not what I'm saying at all all I'm trying to emphasize is the fact that you know, the amount of food and calories you get in your system that's the number one factor which is going to determine any you know weight based changes on your frame of course when you combine that with weight training you know muscle building hypertrophy training then in a bulking context gaining weight I mean, it's gaining muscle plus, you know, some blubber too. You get a little fat on you. That's just the nature of, you know, gaining weight and being in a legit surplus. Though you can mitigate some of that fat gain by doing your daily cardio. Uh, in my opinion, 30 minutes fasted or unfasted in the morning. You know, a couple hours at least before your actual workout. Maybe five or six at the minimum is probably the best case scenario. But if you're trying to cut down... Again, in a muscle bodybuilding context, you're just trying to lose body fat and your training, that stimulus on your muscles is going to, you know, keep them from atrophying and you know, shrinking down. So do not underestimate the power of food and do not overestimate your ability to eat. And when I say that, I mean, if you're the type of dude, if you, I mean, we all probably have heard this before. I eat so much, man. I, I, I kind of feel like a chump even reiterating this because this sort of phrase and uh, situation gets talked about so much. But it's so true. You know, I, I eat so much. I just can't eat, 
Can't gain any weight, dude. I got fat. I burn it all off. You're literally just not eating enough food. You know, it's that's it. That is the end of it. You know, it won't. You're training, whatever. Your sleep. If you're not gaining weight, then that is an indicator of, you know, 99% of the time. You know, maybe if you're, you know, got some kind of crazy sickness and you're like. Your body is just ejecting everything you put into it. Then that's a totally different situation. But if you're just a normal dude, you're feeling good, whatever. The only reason you're not gaining size is lack of calories, lack of high quality protein combined with fats and carbs. So that's on you, man. That is on you. You gotta start scarfing down some more uncrustables, some more. Uh, some more whatever, man. Cereal, treats, protein shakes with four Reese's Cups blended into it with whole milk. I just downed a half gallon of strawberry milk. And I tell you what, the strawberry milk goes down pretty easy. I think I might make a little bit of a... There might be a little bit of a paradigm shift as I'll transition into a little bit of a strawberry milk phase. But you know, whatever you got to do, you know. I, uh, I do see a lot of comments... How can he eat that much sugar and not get diabetes? Dude, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to speak for you specifically, but, I mean, uh, getting back to sort of a two-state situation, like if I split myself in two alternate realities, if I ate the way that I'm eating now with zero training, zero cardio, yeah, I'd probably get fucked up from eating all this, I mean, what is conventionally referred to as just trash, right? I'm sure I would just look like a fat lard after, you know, a year of zero training, zero activity, and eating the way that I am. Actually, I'm not even pretty sure. I'm certain that I would be unrecognizable if that were to happen. But, you know, there is legit merit in the, you know, the idea of burning shit off, right? Training, weight training, I mean, literally just having more muscle on your frame, you're going to have a faster metabolism. And, you know, you couple that, you couple just being a bigger dude with hard training and cardio on the daily, which you should be doing, then, I mean, fuck, dude. I would be surprised if you took a dude who went to the gym every day, trained hard, and did his cardio. I would be genuinely surprised if he ever got type 2 diabetes. I mean, unless you're eating so much that you're just packing on like a completely unnecessary amount of body fat you know if you're in a surplus where even if you were training that hard and doing your cal your uh, your daily cardio if you were legit becoming like obese overweight then sure i could see that happening but you know if you're training and you're maintaining a moderate body fat percentage like even upwards of 15 to 20 then dude i am not so concerned honestly i think that's just a little bit of a cop out to, uh, to not get any food down and change the scale. But, of course, you know, all of this shit that I say, <clears throat> you know, don't forget, uh, sometimes I do want to say things specifically to you as, like, a rule that you should follow. Like, when I talk about training intensity and your daily cardio and tracking your macros, like, stuff like that, I am talking directly to you. And I'm telling you to do it because I know that it's good for you and it's going to result in some more progress for you. But sometimes when, <laughs> when I say this shit, I'm really almost like talking to myself in the past, you know, like I'm just sort of revisiting lessons that I've kind of gone through in my own training, which applies to me specifically and you know, maybe to nobody else. So... Take everything with a with a grain of salt if I say anything. It's a little crazy. But, I mean, I don't say it for no reason, right? I don't say this shit just out of, out of the blue for shock factor. Right? I'm saying it because I've kind of lived it, and this is just how I'm going about it, you know? What better way to kind of learn and understand how shit works than to do it for yourself and see what happens, man? I mean, you're just going to get such a deeper understanding. Like... If you took a dude who actually tried to figure out his macros, tracking it every day, you know, how much calories he needs to, let's say he does this for like years, how many calories he needs to gain weight, how many calories he needs to lose weight, you know, trying different styles of training, figuring out what works best for him. 
he is going to have such an easier time making progress than some dude who just watches a bunch of you know, random ass videos telling them how to do it. You know, hands on learning experience, trial and error, you know, uh, cause and effect. That is what's going to teach you more than any, you know, fucking, well, fitness guru or anybody that you could watch a video on. Now, that's not to say that there's no merit in those kind of videos, of course. I would never say that. It's, uh, there's all sorts of crazy ass baller information out there. But it is your responsibility to use that as a tool and be able to filter out, like, okay, this is fucking stupid. This guy is nuts. I have no idea what he's talking about. Or, right, well, that's kind of starting to make sense. You know, I can kind of understand where he's getting at. I can apply a little bit of logic in my brain and say, I like that. That actually, that actually seems like it might work. You know, and then, that's sort of like a filter which you can use to say, all right, I'm going to try this. And again, it's kind of your responsibility to not just do it for like three days and then say, fuck it. You know, this stuff takes time. There is no, uh, apart from like going from absolutely carb depleted to eating like 500 grams of carbs worth of sherbet, candies, sweets, and Gatorades and like carbing up overnight like that. Now, apart from like a random ass situation there, you are never going to look different on a day-to-day -day basis. At least not by any uh, marginal sense. So if you try something or whatever, you know, maybe you want to try fasting. You want to try some shit for your diet where you wait until 3 o'clock to eat. And then that's your little window before you go to bed. Or, you know, maybe you want to try a new kind of split or a new training style or whatever. Like, it's good to try new shit, even if it might be wrong. Just to go through the process and see what happened. Like, that is going to be good for you. But you have to actually be able to do it for a little bit. Right? I've never seen somebody big and impressive and, you know, seen him in the gym. And every time I talk to him, like, week to week, they're telling me, Oh, I'm trying a new Arnold split. And then the next week, dude, I'm on, I'm on that Mike Menser shit right now. I'm doing two sets a week. And then the, next, the week after that, he's like, Dude, I'm on some Russian high volume... 10 by 10 training. I, I don't know, man. I've, I'm just saying I've never seen anything like that before. You know, it's the dudes who can just come in and be comfortable doing the same kind of shit over and over again. And maybe make adjustments along the way. Now, those guys are going to be the dudes who are legit. Packing on lean tissue. Serious beef. Right? Becoming absolute monoliths of muscle. So... We're getting a little ranty with this one, but there's probably some good intel in there for you if you could uh, if you could decipher it. But I gotta go home, finish the Papa John's pizza I ordered. Half pepperoni and banana pepper, dude. I don't know. If, I should have got like I should have got pepperoni on the other side too. I just got pineapple. It's been a while since I've had pineapple on pizza, and without something salty, it's just a little too sweet. But of course, calories are calories. It's still going into the system. So I'll freaking see you next time. It is the 11th hour. Well, I guess it's a, it's actually really the 8th hour. But Planet Fitness closes at 9. I was going to go to a different gym, but they closed at 8. And by the time I woke up from my nap, it was already like, you know, 6.55. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still a little groggy. I'll just wait a little bit. So, just another benefit of multiple gym memberships. You know, if some of them have funky hours, the other ones can kind of pick up the slack. But I kind of went on a little Planet Fitness rant before. They got a pull down. They got cable rows. You know, they got normal cable stacks plus a couple of machines that I like. I can get a perfect back workout at Planet Fitness. The only thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is uh, when I have to do chest there. Because I really... Well, I, honestly, it kind of depends on the Planet Fitness. I've gone to some that have really cool... They're almost like a... <laughs> I almost want to say like a Planet Fitness Plus. Because they have a couple of different machines. Uh, like these pretty good uh, individually loaded chest press stacks 
or uh, kind of like pull downs like those old not old but like those really big hammer strength ones but the basic gist is this is going to be a good back pump so 757 now i'm already getting some beta alanine from the samsulic select hostile pre hostility foundation you guys ate that up that disappeared in like 30 minutes I, i'm sure they'll do a restock of it but it's got the beta alanine in it already like i like the other uh the other two pre's that they have the hostility and the bloodshot i still do a little bit of bloodshot with the uh with like the sam sulek one but they don't have beta alanine in them already and i kind of want that obviously i don't just want the tingle sensation that doesn't really do anything for me it's actually a little bit annoying but you know beta alanine when you take it for a consistent period you do get a little bit of uh well studies show i know i'm i know it's weird from coming for me to say studies show but you do get a little bit of extra training endurance on your sets and you know what that sounds to me like let me refer you know what that whatever you know what i'm saying that sounds like harder sets better lifts better pumps come on that is right up my freaking alley so I could uh, I was about to say I'm, I want to start on pull downs but I've kind of got into a habit of starting all my back days with pull downs so I think in the spirit of changing it up I should probably start off with some rows of some kind that might be a little bit better I don't know I'll see either way the lift is going to be kind of a back and forth uh but uh, sometimes I kind of change that up too. I don't do a dedicated like lat focus day and then a dedicated like mid back traps, you know, Terry's major rhomboids focus kind of day. Every back day, I usually just try to get a complete back pump with a relatively even amount of work for my lats and my, you know, upper back traps, whatever. Some days I do a little more rows, some days I do a little more pull downs, but. For the most part, I think hitting it like that, it's not the worst way to go about it. But, I, f eh, you know. At the end of the lift, I feel like I want to have a complete pump. That's the whole point of the pump check. So that kind of makes me think that I want to do a few sets of really lat bias stuff like pull downs and pull overs, and then go back and forth between those and rows. So when I'm done, you know, my whole back is just fully pumped. But then, you know, part of me thinks maybe I should just get all my lat work or all my direct lat work out of the way before I finish my, you know, rows at the end. But no matter how you go about it, as long as you get your good pull down sets in, you know, plus your rows, you have a good lift, you get a good pump, you know that you actually pushed yourself hard. Everything else, you know, sets, reps, and RPEs and AMRAP or any other fancy terminology it's kind of just I think you that can sort of cloud your uh, cloud your mind when it comes to your approach in the gym you know I don't see anything wrong with not even knowing what reps in reserve means and just going into the gym and making sure that every one of your sets you know you seriously pushed it hard when it, uh, when it comes to training to failure, uh, I think that can get a little bit misconstrued sometimes because on my really heavy sets, you know, on my, uh, like incline bench, I, I need to get a spotter or else I'm going to get smushed. Heavy squats, you know, I need those safeties so I can rest it when I can't get the weight back up. So training to failure, sometimes specific movements will let you train to failure. And other ones, you kind of have to just train to satisfaction. So, like I was saying, with a bench or a squat, it's not very hard to, you know, do a lot of weight and get to a point where you physically just cannot do another rep. Same thing with, uh, like, dumbbell curls or... Uh, what's another good one? Whatever. Any, any pressing, stuff like that. You can hit a wall where it's like, all right, I'm, I physically can't do another rep. 
or at least you're like right on the cusp of not being able to do another one. Maybe you had one in the tank, but it just, you couldn't get it out. But with other movements like leg extensions or leg curls, tricep push down, side laterals, pec flies, with those kind of movements, you know, you can kind of just keep pumping out partials a little bit. So I could reach a point doing lat pull downs where I can no longer pull the bar all the way down to like chin height, but that doesn't mean that the set is done, you know, because I could still get it to, you know, nose height for maybe two, and then maybe, you know, brim height, top of the head, you know, a couple inches above, and just keep on forcing reps until I can really only move the bar a couple of inches. I like those, uh, I like doing the weighted, uh, not even weighted, but I like doing the partials at the end of a set once I can no longer do complete reps. But you know, that's the kind of set where instead of, okay, I physically can't do another rep, I'm done, the set's over, that was failure. With a set like that, that's like, okay, you know, I get to my last rep and I know, okay, that was a good one, I can, I can put it down now. So when it comes to being, being able to call a set and say to yourself, okay, that was, that was good. You know, I did enough partials of leg extensions. That was, that was a good one. That's, uh, that's where you kind of have to not be a, not be a chump and actually push yourself. Because I could do a set of pull downs and I could, <laughs> or I mean, if you, I guess if you're training with your buddy or whatever, you could probably pretend to hit failure. You could pretend to do a hard set and just be like, oh, that was a good one. But you know you had like 10 reps in reserve. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pretending to do a hard set. Holy shit. I've never thought of anything more preposterous. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. 804. I'm like three minutes out. Let's just park, get in there, get warm, and then jump to the first working set. In front of me for uh, you know whether or not one of us is going to be able to pull through or back up and it looks like I won very nice so solid back day man what else can I say you know solid rows eh. that first set of pull downs with the two individual D handles not the biggest fan it was a good set don't get me wrong but certainly not my favorite. Kind of just had to jump on that one out of um, out of necessity. My basic survival instincts to get all the volume that I wanted to do, combined with the fact that the gym was closing, I didn't have unlimited time. It kind of made me jump the gun and do a movement which I don't necessarily love. But that's good for you. That's probably good for you to do some movements out of the ordinary, at least you know, out of the ordinary for your general style of training. Just to make sure it doesn't get stale. You know, I don't necessarily think that inside of my muscles, if I do a movement that I haven't done for a while, they're like, holy fuck, Sam, you're shocking me. You, you know, like an Arnold style, you gotta shock the muscle. But you do gotta think, man, your body is fucking... I mean, anything that's alive, it's pretty, pretty good at adapting. You know, and uh, who's the top dog on planet Earth? I've made this statement before. We've been floating around for a pretty long time. Okay, your body is not just like, holy crap, a one set of pull downs? I, I better grow my lats to astronomical proportion to be able to handle this kind of stuff. Oh man, your body is tough. And sometimes not in the ways that are conducive with muscle growth. You know, because as you get better at lifting you know as you get more exposed to weight and you can do harder sets and whatnot you also kind of become more efficient at it you know you get diminishing returns the longer and the longer you lift so you know as a beginner you've never done this shit before holy fuck man my lats are blown up i mean potentially month to month changes if you're training hard you're eating your food but as you lift it becomes a little slower a little slower so that's when you really got to try to make sure you're constantly battling yourself in terms of making sure that your training is on point. Not just in terms of style. Honestly, I think that comes second 
to making sure that your training is intense. You know, I think for this whole bulk, or even for the last few bulks, or even just any dude, if they had a workout plan that was the same for every lift, like if you did, let's say three sets of incline bench, then two sets of incline dumbbell and two sets of pec flies, I think that'd be a good workout. And if every time you did a chest day like that, you made sure you really pushed yourself, all your sets were sufficiently hard, you were actually going to failure, you were, you know, increasing weight over time, progressively overloading, dude, I think you could get a pretty solid chest. Actually, no, I think you definitely can get a solid chest doing the same workout back to back to back, as long as the intensity is there. Now, do I think that's the best case scenario? Probably not. That's why I make sure all my lifts are just a touch different, sometimes very different if I really want to change it up. But that's just kind of goes to show, or at least I'm trying to convey the fact that your intensity is really what's going to determine whether or not you have a good lift. You know, I could get, you know, Mr. So-and-so, greatest bodybuilding coach in the world, to write me a training routine. And, well, of course, I guess if I had somebody do that, they would tell me, like, okay, make sure this set is intense. And But let's say they just gave me exercises. Let's say they just gave me exercises and reps. Like, do 10 reps of bench, 10 reps of incline, you know, whatever. Let's say they just gave me that, and it was perfect. They gave me the perfect amount of, you know, sets and reps and movements and orders and whatever, and, like, they told me to do some supersets too. But if when I did those sets, you know, I didn't do a weight that was hard, it was very manageable, and I was just going through the motions, I would get nothing out of it. You know, it's not very difficult to just, you know, do lifts, go to the gym, and just be maintaining the build that you have. You know, like the difference between progressing and just maintaining and plateauing, it's not insane. You know, so that's where even if you think you're pushing it, you should probably try to step on the gas a little bit further, see if you can get your RPMs a little closer to 7,000. I know you've been cruising at three. You know, if you look the same from year to year or month to month, then clearly something's not working. Now, I guess if your goal is maintenance and you're, you're already at your goal physique, then I guess you're spoiled. You're living the life. You know, some of us, we, uh, we've got an addiction to mass that may never be satisfied. But that's the whole point, man. You know, what worthwhile journey comes to an end like that? I can't think of one. I cannot think of one. So, yeah. I just gotta go home, get some sweets. Uh, made a big ass liter of Gatorade powder I've been sipping on. Probably gonna finish that up. Maybe do some egg whites. It's been a little while since I've had eggs. I've been doing a lot of steaks and. Uh, I've been leaning towards steaks and protein powder the last couple of days. I wanna get some more whole proteins. So, not only do I wanna change up my exercise selection, I want to change up my protein consumption as well. I don't want to sit here and just do the same diet day after day. And following the same analogy I just got at about how I could do the same lift week after week, you know, split after split and get results. I could eat the same food day after day and I'd, I'd still gain weight for sure. It's just not as fun, you know. I want to eat what I want. Make sure I plug it in and have it hit my macro goal for the day, of course. But assuming that I do hit my, you know, X amount of carbs, fats, and proteins. And I do want to make sure all my proteins are from a high-quality source. You know, you're not going to catch me getting 250 grams worth of soy protein per day. Now, if you're, uh, if you're soy-pilled, fuck, man. Keep going. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and keep eating my beef, eggs, milk. You know the deal. You know the freaking deal. So I think that's all I gotta say, man. Apart from the fact that uh, the dry air is chapping my lips, everything is going quite well. So let's uh, let's just keep this bulk going for the next. Uh, don't even get don't even get me started on predicting how long it's gonna be. You know, back in the back in like day 50 of the spring bulk earlier this year, I was like, hey, we'll go to day 100 and then be done went a little further than that but uh i guess we'll just have to see either way at the end of it i 
I don't want to be able to fit in the clothes that I'm wearing right now. That is for sure. So, cardio in the morning, arm day tomorrow. Make sure you have a good, uh, fuck man, just have a good day. And when I say have a good day, I really mean have a good lift. I think you know that. So, I'll freaking see you tomorrow. The fact that we're headed over to throw legs around at the YMCA. So, eesh. I've got about three more days worth of school for this semester at least. So, not, uh, not something I love thinking about because I got a lot of work and studying and projects to make sure I have totally finished before I can, you know, totally chill for the winter. But, I'll just try not to think about it. At least not for the next hour and a half while I try to break down my hamstrings and quads into the basic fiber of their beings. Hamstrings, of course, is going to be done. Well, it's definitely going to be uh, <coughs> started off with laying hamstring curls. Uh, at this gym, that's just the best hamstring machine that, well, that I use. I could do the seated hamstring curl, but something about that one, it just doesn't really hit me that well. I can't, I don't know if it's like the, the machine itself, or maybe I just haven't been adjusting the seat right. There are some seated hamstring curls, which I love, but this one's just kind of, eh. there is most certainly a difference in hitting a, in like the stimulus of your hamstring from doing laying to seated. So for variability's sake, I should probably throw some seated in there too, but I get such a crazy pump and burn from the laying hamstring curls. I think I might just be a little bit more inclined to stick with those. So after a few there, once I'm warmed up and strong and I feel fresh and I'll be able to throw around the stack for, you know, so and so amount of reps, obviously controlling the first couple when I'm strong, you know, get a full range of motion. But then once I'm on to, you know, the partials, I'll just burn out until I can barely move. You know, I don't think that's a bad way to go about it. I'd say a few of those and then move on to uh, cable RDLs, kind of jerry-rig a little bit of a setup over there. Uh, I c so RDLs on their own are already kind of funky. It's a kind of tricky movement to be able to actually do correctly and only feel your hamstrings firing. But I guess uh, man, it's really just sort of... I want to say something you just kind of learn over time, but I don't know, man, it's just, it's just a little bit tricky because your body wants to use your glutes and your hamstring, no, no, it wants to use your glutes and your lower back, you know, pretty much the other two big key muscle groups in your posterior chain, you know, things that are helping you pull things up, like in a deadlift, so you kind of have to be acquainted enough with your build, you know, and have a little bit of muscle control to be able to keep your glutes and your lower back loose. I mean, obviously tight enough for safety's sake, but loose enough and not contracting so that your hamstrings are what are really doing all the work. So you can do them with a straight bar or on a Smith machine or with dumbbells, but I never feel it better than when I do it with two cables. Uh, I kind of have to jerry-rig a little setup, but we'll, uh, We'll get into that later. And then legs, or no, no, no. Quads? Quads is just going to be leg extensions primarily. I'm chilling out on squats for a little bit uh, just because I want to make sure my whole little lower pressing system gets back to baseline. Uh, over the past couple of months, I keep squatting real heavy, and then I just keep retweaking my right adductor. And I've just been kind of in a, a loop of like, you know, a couple squat days, real heavy. Oh, okay, I can kind of, it's feeling a little sore now. And then take maybe another couple squat days off, then do it again. And it's kind of tweaked. Uh, it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's just an endless loop. So it's, uh, it's literally insane to do the same shit over and over again. So I'll let, my, uh, I'll let my adductors and whatever else down there comes into play when I do those heavy pressing. Just have a little bit of time to re... You know, reorganize whatever repair 
Not that I think I really tore anything like that, but it's just a, a bit of a tweak that's a little bit too annoying to ignore. So, leg extensions combined with potentially Smith Machine sissy squats, but definitely body weight sissy squats. Uh, I honestly... Oh. Of course, people get crazy quad pumps doing whatever kind of workouts they do, but when I incorporate leg extensions supersetted into body weight sissy squats, so let's say, you know, 20 reps with a, a really heavy weight for, for you on the leg extension, approaching if not just hitting failure, and then you stand up, you grab onto the machine, and you do some body weight sissy squats. If you really push it, something about the stretch that I can get on my quads when I do them, I mean, it's <laughs> my quads never get more pumped than when I do those. So, apart from the fact that I've got to actually get in there and see how everything feels, I mean, hey, maybe I do those laying hamstring curls, and I say, oh, this kind of feels like shit, I don't want to do anything like this. And, you know, I'll, I'll adjust accordingly. But, like all my other lifts, going into them, I have a basic framework of a, of a lift that I want to do. But, you know, it's still subject to being influenced by a couple of things. You know, my current state. Maybe I get in there and, fuck man, maybe my right hamstring feels like off. Something about it, it's like real tight and tender. I'm like, oh, dude, I should just let, I should let my fucking hamstrings relax, right? And if it's like that, then of course, you no know, hamstrings for me. But that's kind of something that's, it does sound like common knowledge. But even advanced lifters, it's going to, like me included, it's always good to remind yourself. If something feels off, you are much better, you know, lifting another day uninjured than pushing it, ripping your shit off and having to say, well, I'm fucked, you know. I, uh, I'm trying my best to get to, to get to a point of, let's just call it skill, where I can really push every lift, but not so far that I ever hurt myself. You know, that's kind of the, I'd say that's honestly what everybody's training should look like. If this is the realm of intensity, uh, you know, maybe, obviously weight is included. You're probably not gonna you know, rip your quads off doing 50 pounds of leg extension or rip your biceps off doing like 20 pound bicep curls. But let's say just kind of a grading scale of how hard you're pushing it. Here is like you're gonna rip your pecs off. So something too too much weight, too much whatever, that's up there. Really, I think this is all about weight, you know. But somewhere a little bit below there is you know just about as much as you can handle for a good set without doing any legit damage, right? So you get up to this level of intensity, it's as much as you can do, and you're comfortable doing it. That's where you want to be. This is like. You're not redlining, but you're at 6,000. You know, you're right up there in fifth gear. You don't want to go over. So, not too much time to dilly dally. I'm, uh, I was fucking sleepy before I actually got up and took my pre and everything else. So, I, I kind of delayed the lift a touch. Let's get in there and get warmed up. I got to do a little bit of calves before I actually start uh, hamstrings. Because if I don't do a little bit of calves, then my hamstrings feel a little bit tight. Like, as I do the curls, I can kind of feel in, like, the pit of my knees. Like, oh, that's a little bit uncomfortable. So, a little remedy if that's something that you run into doing hamstrings. During hamstrings. Maybe do a little bit of calves before. I feel like there's two very drastic ways of hitting them. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable with my style of training hamstrings, so I don't really have a lot of internal, like, uh, you know, I don't want to say conflicts again, but, you know, internal thoughts swaying back and forth on different kinds of training for hamstrings. You know, I like my, uh, you know, heavy sets with partials and then you know, go until I can't go anymore, stuff like that. And I've gotten some pretty good hamstring development from it, so I think I'll keep it up. But with quads... Uh, part of me thinks I should hit quads 
with a little bit more volume. And I'll explain why I think this. So let's take two scenarios. One, you know, let's say I warm up. Uh, maybe I do a couple working sets of leg extensions. My quads are very warm. You know, I am ready to do some squats. So what would the better scenario be? Maybe one set of like five plates for, you know, like 10. And then, you know, there's no chance I could really do a set with that same intensity again. Just because, you know, the recoverability of my quads in the workout, they're just not going to get back to that strength level. You know, if I do five plates for 10, and that's and that last rep is RPE 10, it's my max intensity. I cannot do another one. Or better yet, I just you know, actually hit failure and then have to re-rack it. I couldn't get even six reps if I tried that set again. Just because it did so much damage. So that's kind of one method of squats that I've done. And another that I've kind of gone through is rather than trying to push it to the absolute limit weight-wise like that, obviously within a working set range, you know, I've done quad days where instead of trying to push the squat going crazy, I'd be a little bit more conservative with it. I do a weight that I can actually handle. And let's say I do like four plates for, obviously that doesn't feel like a big difference, four versus five, but it is a pretty big difference. A hundred more pounds on your back is very substantial. So let's say I could do four plates or even go as low as three plates, you know, go even lighter. And instead of just doing that one crazy set, you know, maybe do four or five higher volume sets, like maybe failure-ish at about 15 reps, you know, and then re-rack it, take a few minutes and be able to recover enough to do it again. So part of me thinks, and not just because of like things that I've kind of experienced, but just listening to real freaks, you know, I'm talking like watching older uh, lifters, hearing what they have to talk about quad training. And you know, in a bodybuilding context for muscle growth, you know, they don't really give a shit about the weight. For the most part, a lot of, uh, except for when they want to show off for like a training clip or like a training video or stuff. A lot of those guys who have monstrous fucking legs, I'm talking old open bodybuilder dudes, you know, they were doing lighter weight, higher reps, really going for more of a burn. And I've kind of heard the same thing. So I'm starting to think I should kind of change the way that I go about my quad training and make it a little bit more of a kind of even output of exertion. I feel like the way that I kind of naturally like to train is I get warmed up, of course, and then every set, I'm trying to push it to the limit. High S intensity set, take a second. High S intensity, take a, take a little bit. Like that. Like every set is just like right there on the limit. But I think I'll be able to get more work done on my quads if, you know, maybe I chill out with the actual physical strain of the sets, like in terms of their weight and everything else, and maybe be a bit more methodical. So I'm starting to think that for quads, I may benefit more so from lighter squeezing reps, kind of higher volume, really burning kind of sets, kind of stuff, rather than, you know, my kind of super heavy method. You know, because I mean, strong quads, are not inherently big quads, you know? I don't want to say any slander or anything like that, but in the general scheme of, uh, like, size, you know, we've got absolute freaks, and of course they're strong. If you have a lot of muscle, you are strong. You can physically move a lot of weight, mass move to mass. I believe that wholeheartedly. But, you know, we got dudes like Larry Wheels or a ton of other power lifters. He just kind of comes to mind and, like, like, he's got big legs, of course. He's a total freak. But you wouldn't necessarily guess purely by looking at his legs that that dude can squat like 900 pounds, you know? So I, need, I think I need to kind of have a little bit of a internal talk with myself and sort of say, all right, man, like, it's cool throwing around a lot of weight. I know you like it, but I think you're better off 
going a little bit more conservative with it and doing these sets that really burn. I kind of think that subconsciously I prefer doing my really heavy sets with quads, like trying to do really heavy leg extensions and my really heavy squats because it's easier for me to hit failure because it's not so much of an endurance test, right? For me to do a set of squats where it's heavy enough that I fail at eight reps, that's a little bit easier for me than to do a set of squats where I would fail at like 20 reps. And I'm not just saying like an endurance test, like I do the set and like halfway through it, I'm like, <gasps> like I can't breathe. <clears throat> I'm just talking about the fucking pain that a long squeezing set of quads gives you. So I think it's almost a situation where it's like, you know what you don't want to do. And that just happens to be exactly what you should do. You know, you're fucking laying down at home. Oh, I don't want to do my fucking homework. But I should. Like some shit like that. So I think I need to... I think I may need to change my style up. Maybe I'll watch some old <clears throat> quad training videos and get some, uh, get some new material in my mind. I'm starting to think I should also throw some lunges in. That would pretty much fit the demo the demographic of the kind of sets that I'm thinking about. Very long, strenuous, burning sets. I think that'd be good for me. But then again, I don't have zero quads. I've clearly been doing something. So, you know, every time I kind of talk about like, oh, I really want to kind of change up my style of this. Uh, it's pr Let's say I do change it up and it is much better. I'm definitely going to make a little more gains if the training is, you know, better stimulus. But as long as you go in the gym and you go hard and you're doing a reasonably formatted workout, it's not like you can do one where you go in, you really push it, you can feel your quads the day after, and like walking down the steps of the gym, you actually get a hold on to the handrail for real. Now, if you're doing shit like that, you're still going to be on the path towards progress. As long as you couple that training with hitting your protein and calories plus at least a decent night's sleep. I'm kind of an asshole about that, and I'm really only cu only uh, cutting myself short by not making sure I get my solid eight hours a night. But you gotta, you gotta, man. You know, speaking of that, I used to do melatonin for a while. I don't think it really did anything for me. I think what I really gotta do is just fucking stay away from blue light, figure out how to detach myself from my phone, and you know, kind of just go to sleep with my thoughts. And fuck, man, for some people, that could be rough. So, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you gotta kind of train your mind as well if you're dealing with any kind of internal mumbo jumbo. Anything that's kind of clouding your mental state, uh, I mean, in a training context, your results will be affected. You know, where the mind goes, the body follows. I believe that with every fiber of my freaking being. You know, so if in your mind you feel like a chump, guess what, man? You're gonna act like one. So fake it till you make it, dog. Put a smile on. Get in the gym. Fucking. If you're not hyped up, fucking pretend you're hyped up. And eventually, honestly, just going through that little motion, you'll start getting excited for real. You know. So. I keep, I keep referencing this, but if right now you're in the it's so over mentality, don't worry, man. Don't worry. Just try to keep yourself on track. Keep moving. And soon enough, you're going to be like, we're so back. I got to stop saying that. I feel like I say that every third video. Too true, though. Too freaking true. So, I get home, get some grub, drink a fuck ton of water, plus electrolytes. I don't have any Silo 9 with me at home. A little electrolyte amino acid blend, which I do like. So I'll have to get some kind of electrolyte packet. But last part of this little post workout rant you are not well hydrated. I guarantee it. I can almost guarantee it. I know you, you don't have a jug full of fucking electrolytes every day and you're just constantly sipping on it, dude. You know. Oh, but. I mean, I had half my hydro flask today. What the fuck? Not enough. I'm serious. You will notice a difference 
when you're fully hydrated. No more random ass cramps, no headaches, better training. Even if you're not eating in a crazy surplus, if you're fully saturated with all your magnesium and potassium and calcium and you know everything else under oh holy fuck Jesus Christ that guy just ran a stop sign and almost killed me actually I probably went okay would have been okay but fucking hell man if I was prone to insane road rage I could definitely foresee following this type of dude oh my god holy shit be careful be fucking careful, man. Even if you're on top of everything, people can just run out of the stop sign and smack you. <sighs> that would have been fucked. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Well, that's enough near crash scares for one day. Get home if you're doing some random bullshit. Get your pre in your system. If you're lifting in a while, get a big ass meal in you full of carbs. If you want to get some treats in there too, a little bit of sugars, I'm not going to I'm not going to blame you. In fact, I might even encourage it, honestly. Even when I'm cutting down and I'm in a calorie deficit, pre-workout, I want a little treat. You know, I want some fucking uh, I'll do a bag of Skittles pre-workout even when I'm dieting because it's not Oh crap, dude, you're eating Skittles, you're going to you're not in deficit, you're not dieting at all. That's just 50 grams of carbs pretty easily digestible carbs which you know they're going to spike spike it's going to spike my blood sugar help me have a better workout you know so i uh we're really just hitting all sorts of topics now but i think that's a perfect time to end it so like i said i'm going to get home worry about all the school shit that i've put off until the very last minute Get ready for cardio in the morning after a good night's rest, and then tomorrow's going to be chest. So, not sure where I'm going to go for that, but I can guarantee it's going to be a freaky-ass pump. So, I will see you next time.